You know what's fun? For what is truly a widely beloved genre, destruction games are few and far between. Think about how many games you've played that have had truly dynamic destruction, instead of great looking but scripted destruction. While they've been peppered into the gaming sphere, they're certainly not common. But what makes a great destruction game anyway? Is it chunks of concrete bursting off of walls as they are punched by enemies' gunfire? Is it cars and barrels exploding in a shockwave of fire? Is it the walls of a building crumbling around you as mortar strikes pelt the building you're in? Or is it an entire map changing shape as a catastrophic event takes place? In this video, I'm going to look at which games got destruction right, and also take a dip into the science behind why we find destruction so entertaining. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz, you know. I'm something of a scientist myself. And the history of Destruction Games begins, of course, with Rampage. In 1986, Midway, then going by the name Bally Midway, released the game Rampage on arcade cabinets. The game revolves around three humans who transform into giant monsters and wreak havoc on a city of buildings and skyscrapers as a military force tries to take them down. The premise is simple but fun. Destroy the city and you win. Rampage takes inspiration from films like King Kong for some of its destruction-hungry monsters. Although it might seem like it, Godzilla is actually not an inspiration for the game's lizard-like character, Lizzie. That credit goes to the film 20 Million Miles to Earth, which was released in 1957 and features a lizard-like monster from Venus. Nevertheless, the premise of the game was a genuinely cool idea at the time. After decades of watching monster horror movies like King Kong, the game lets you play in one. Instead of fighting monsters like a normal game would have you do, it subverts that expectation and has you creating the chaos. And the game's destruction speaks for itself. It is a lot of fun to punch and swipe at the buildings around you as pressure mounts to destroy faster before the army can take you down and you shrink back into a guilty, shriveled little man. Rampage was followed up by a handful of games that featured destruction as the theme of the game. Rare's Blast Core, released over 10 years after Rampage, has you plowing through levels in a bulldozer and a mech. Rampage's first sequel, World Tour, was released in 1997 to middling reviews, along with Rampage 2, Universal Tour. In fact, citywide monster destruction wasn't genuinely improved upon in style until 2003 when War of the Monsters hit the shelves. Seriously. If you've never sat down with a friend and played War of the Monsters, you are doing yourself a disservice. It is a fantastic couch co-op game where you, and up to three friends, can duke it out in monster movie inspired maps. And the city destruction is, I would like to boldly declare, still rivaled to this day. You can pick up your friend or a CPU if you're playing alone and hurl them into a skyscraper. And that skyscraper will burst into rubble, and when your friend gets up, they can take a piece of the steel foundation from that building and beat the living shit out of you with it. The music is great, the gameplay is great, and the destruction was phenomenal. The levels even featured a degree of levolution. You know, that thing that Battlefield keeps trying to popularize. In the level Sunopolis, you could satisfy a number of secret prompts that would call a tsunami to come wreck the city. The game was ahead of its time and overshadowed by far less superior Godzilla games. 
That being said, a company had released what was a predecessor to what could be the king of destruction games just two years prior to War of the Monsters release. So we're going back a little bit. That company was Volition, and the game was Red Faction. It might surprise those familiar with the game Red Faction Guerrilla to know that the original Red Faction game also included an incredible destruction mechanic. But instead of destroying buildings, this mechanic allowed you to burrow holes into the actual terrain around you using explosives. See a yellow circle on the wall? Blow through it to get to a new room. Hell, want to burrow around a door that opens but you still kind of want to see if the game will let you do it? You can do that too. And that's gaming. If you're not doing shit just to see what will happen, like throwing a remote explosive at an enemy, you're not gaming to your full potential. After Red Faction was released, we see destruction peppered into gaming. And I don't mean like cars blowing up or scripted sequences featuring explosions and buildings falling. I mean true player-driven destruction as a mechanic of the game. And the games that chose to do it typically did it right. I mean, take a look at the Battlefield Bad Company games. Is there an enemy in that building over there? Who the fuck knows? But let's blow a hole through the wall and find out. Or in Red Faction Guerrilla. Want to bring the whole building down? You got it. Want to drive your car straight through the building? Hell yeah, the world's your oyster, man. Do whatever you want. Want to knock a building down with another building? Sure, yeah. Yeah, do that shit. Red Faction Guerrilla once again revolutionized the destruction game genre. Following that game, we've had destruction take a front seat in many games that see that there could be some value to letting players tear shit up. Now we have entire games that are focused on the complete annihilation of the environment as the player sees fit. Minecraft is a really easy example of this, but I would actually turn you toward a more recent game, Teardown. Teardown is a game that screams in your face Do you like to blow shit up? And when you shakily answer in the affirmative, it politely hands you a rocket launcher and a flamethrower, pats you on the head like Susie Lou Who getting a glass of water, and gives you a sandbox of shit to destroy. And if that isn't enough, the mod community has taken the freedom of Teardown and really ran with it. I mean, you can get a gravity gun and a portal gun. And with tools like that, the game world is really at your mercy. Teardown is the only game I've come across that lets you surgically remove the Dursley's home from its foundations and toss it into the air. This is the beauty of a game mechanic. When it allows a player to use their creativity and their mind to say, sure, I could blow up this wall with a grenade, but what if I simply opened a portal and drove a bus through it instead? And some games really take that freedom and run with it. Take a look at Just Cause 3 for example. It's another game that not only makes destruction a front and center aspect of the game, it rewards players for doing it. Or at the very least, doesn't punish you if you want to, say, grapple hook a civilian into a perpetual swing around a pole. And that in itself is a benefit. Too many games punish you for trying to have a good time. Just because blowing shit up feels good and makes the front of our pants feel tight, does that mean we should be ashamed? But why is that? Why do we get a satisfying little rush from watching shit break apart? Let's find out together. Science. Science.
first thing I want to know is just how little actual research has been conducted on this matter. Almost no one is interested in the catharsis we feel as a species when we watch something burn to the ground. It's something pointed out by one of the few articles I found and on the first line of that article no less. Scientists, what are you doing? I need more research into why I like watching glass bottles shatter. This article, which is titled, Destroying Things for Pleasure on the Relation of Sadism and Vandalism, refers to vandalism as the act of, quote, destroying things for pleasure, end quote. So when they're talking about vandalism in the following research, just know that they're talking about the deliberate destruction of something. The authors listed here, out of respect for the pronunciation of their names, indicate that there are several motivational drivers that cause us to want to break, destroy, or vandalize things. Those motivations are, quote, curiosity, excitement, creativity, hostility, frustration, and revenge. For the most part, this article strays away from the latter three of those motivations and instead favors and focuses on the pleasure aspects of vandalism. In analyzing the desire to destroy things, as well as the pleasure derived from it, the authors take a look at the driving force behind sadism as a possible inspiration. They state, quote, The very essence of sadism is that sadists are motivated to dominate and to control other individuals by harming them because they experience pleasure through their cruelty, end quote. Now that's not strictly true for gamers who just want to blow shit up. But they do follow it up by saying that sadism can emerge in subclinical contexts through less extreme outlets, such as, quote, killing bugs or harming an unknown person when engaging in trolling, a practice that reflects destructive behavior towards others on the internet, punishing cooperative interaction partners, or playing violent video games. Any of that sound like something you do? No? That's okay. The authors immediately say, Easy. Okay. and emphasize that the pleasure derived from destroying objects should not be equated with sadism. Basically, sadism is a cousin of what they say we feel when we blow up a wall in Red Faction. The research of the author's study found that there is a significant correlation between finding pleasure in the destruction of objects and sadistic traits. That's pretty easy to infer. Does it mean that each person who likes to see things blow up has sadistic tendencies? No, not according to the authors. They say, quote, nonetheless, destroying objects for pleasure and sadism are distinct orientations, end quote. So, if cruelty drives the desire for destruction in sadists, then what drives it in us gamers? Dr. Christian Jarrett, a cognitive neuroscientist has provided an answer that draws a parallel with this research. On the BBC Science Focus magazine website, Dr. Jarrett answers the question, quote, why is destruction so satisfying, end quote. His answer is this, quote, feeling in control is a basic human need. And one theory posits that deliberately destroying things is incredibly satisfying because it makes us feel powerful. Anecdotal evidence from visitors to anger rooms indicates that there's also a cathartic element, especially when we've been suppressing frustration in our everyday lives. Many people also get a thrill from watching things being smashed to pieces. In this case, curiosity, awe, and aesthetics are at play as we wonder how long the doomed object will survive and how it will look when it explodes. My opinion as a gamer is that Dr. Jarrett hits the nail on the head. Destruction in games is very satisfying to me personally because I'm curious about the potential of that destruction. In other words, it's not watching the boom that I enjoy, it's causing the boom in creative ways. Thank you.